chair recognizes the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Kinsicker, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I was reflecting the other day. Uh, last week, we all joined together in this chamber, and we held up our right hand, and we swore an oath to protect and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That is a oath I've taken both as a member of Congress, now in my fourth term, and as a military pilot, something similar to that, talking about the importance of the military to protect and defend the Constitution. In both these roles, I've seen firsthand the sacrifice that many of the military uh, have been willing to make to defend their freedoms, to defend the Constitution, to defend the country. This last month was especially tough for our nation's security and for our foreign policy. The eight-year decline of American global leadership under the president came to a head. A sad trend built by the, uh, the, administ the Obama administration continued as the White House worked with our enemies and abandoned our friends. For one, the recent ceasefire in Syria was re reached without United States input, ultimately empowering tyrants in Iran and in Russia. In fact, to think about the situation in Syria, I want to remind people there's half a million dead Syrians right now, innocent civilians. And I've heard people say, completely incorrectly, that it doesn't matter, they're all basically terrorists. Untrue. But let's say it is. There are 50,000 children in Syria that did not get an opportunity to go be a teacher or a police officer or a firefighter or a doctor because of tyrants in Iran, because of Bashar al-Assad, and because of Russia empowering them and using precision-guided munitions to hit innocent civilians and take their life away. Last week, the U.S. abstained from a vote in the United Nations Security Council on the biased resolution targeting our ally, Israel. Mr. Speaker, rather than turning on freedom-loving nations around the world, we must stand with them. Nowhere is this more important than in the fight against terrorism. Before the holidays, a list went out from ISIS accounts with the names of churches in the United States that should be attacked over the holidays. Then an attack in Berlin took the lives of 12 innocent civilians and injured more than 50 in a Christmas market. On New Year's Eve, there was a savage attack at a nightclub in Istanbul, killing 39 and injuring dozens. Both attacks were claimed by ISIS, seeking to strike fear into freedom-loving people around the world. While we all must remain vigilant, we cannot give in to that fear, and we must continue to live our lives. What we need right now, Mr. Speaker, is a renewed American moment, renewed American leadership after eight years of decline. We need a Churchill moment. I think about Winston Churchill after the bombs rained down in London, and instead of hiding and cowering and talking about how terrible it is, he goes out on the streets, rallies the people, and says that you cannot shatter us, and the people unite behind him. It's time for America to exhibit the same kind of leadership exhibited by George W. Bush in the bullhorn speech after the fall of the World Trade Center. He showed Americans unity, strength, resolve, and he reminded the world that our foundations will not be shaken even if you shake the foundations of our biggest buildings. And you can shatter our steel, but you can't shatter the steel of American resolve. I haven't heard speeches like that in quite a while from the Oval Office. Mr. Speaker, it's been a rough election cycle for our country. It's been a tough, very divisive and difficult time, but now it's time to come together. We're going to have our partisan differences and battles, and that's fine. That's what we're out here for. But, Mr. Speaker, America needs to remember our mission, our God-given mission. And I believe that's to be an example of self-governance to billions of people that don't have what we have but are desperate for it. We used that kind of leadership in the Cold War as millions lived behind the Iron Curtain and saw what freedom could be. And there's Iron Curtains that exist today. Terrorism, strong men, a resurgent Russia, an iron curtain of soft expectations and low expectations of people. For the last eight years, we failed to articulate that mission. Mr. Speaker, we are a nation in need of remembering that mission, and it's my sincere hope that this will change very soon.